Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! Hi-ho, this is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you're watching the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, where we talk about RPGs. I just want to point out that we have, uh, again, another wonderful set by Jeff Brown. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, now, tonight we have uh, we have from uh, Neologism Press, we have R Raphael Chandler. How are you, Raphael? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for getting my name right. All right, all right. Yeah, now, so, uh, Raphael, uh, it, it, no, no, it's... it's Raphael? Raphael, right? Sorry, Raphael? Correct. Okay, great, great, great. Now, you happen to be the guy who created uh, the first game that I played on air. It's called View Screen. It's pretty scary, and I have some flashbacks about that. And that's your fault. I have similarly conflicted feelings about my father, so... I sympathize. We've got some sympathy going on here. Now, I understand that there's a setting called Narcosa that you crowdsource. Now, that's really smart, getting people to do all your work for you and then selling it back to them. I, that's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, Narcosa started as a joke, actually, in Kansas City Homicide. We were sitting around because everybody else was at Gen Con, all the cool kids are having fun. And I thought, well, what if we all just get together and create our own setting book? Nothing fancy, nothing huge, just um, a few random tables and some new spells. And I just finished watching True Detective, which I loved, and I wanted to do something Carcosa related. And I thought Narcosa, drug drug themed Carcosa. And it kind of took off. The hashtag took on a life of its own. Dozens of people contributed hundreds of ideas. I bound the book and gave it away as a PDF. And it's also available at cost, meaning nobody profits from it. It's it's community owned and we're already working on a sequel called Narcosmos. And anybody can participate. It's completely decentralized. I'm just the editor, and all I do is, is correct typographical errors and compile everything that's been contributed into a single volume and then organize it. So anyone who wants to be a part of it is able to do so by default. All you need is the hashtag, Narcosmos. Oh, okay. See, I was thinking it was more like, you know, borrowing your buddy's RPG books and then selling it back to him. So, so it's, it's free? That's awesome. The PDF is free, and the, the print version is sold at cost, meaning nobody makes any profit from it, except, I guess, Lulu, the company that does print on demand, but nobody involved in the creation of the text gets profit. Cool. Okay, now I understand that you are writing a thing called The Lost World, and that's for Flamentations of the Lame Princess. It's, it's Lacerations of the Flayed Princocks, which means the yips can be allowed. And the book is called World of the Lost, and it's about dinosaurs, and it's about a mythical city in what is present-day Nigeria. I really want to know, how many hit dice are Slee Stacks? 666, but fortunately they are nonviolent. They are pacifists. Pacifists run through your face. That's a little joke. The mammal joke. <laughs> not, not, nothing against amphibians at all. You, you shouldn't. I mean, unless it's your caressing hand, because you like them. Is your PhD in exactly? Oh, well, it's in amphibian studies. <laughs> I know myself. Oh, one of those. I understand. Hey, so recently you wrote a novel about a bunch of supervillains that have had to band together and pull off one of the one great job now, uh, and it might save the world or something like that. I, I just read the back of it. Now, is that autobiographical? Yes, yes. I myself was a supervillain in the 90s. No, wait, <laughs> I was drunk. At any rate, the novel is about a group of supervillains who I modeled to a certain extent after radical groups like the Weather Underground, people who committed crimes and did terrible things because they believed they were in the right. They were fighting in the name of the people. They were revolutionaries. And the same applies to the supervillains in this novel. Whereas the heroes are fighting tooth and nail to maintain the status quo, and they're effectively agents of the hegemony. That's the idea behind the novel. Wow, that's 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 pretty heady. Um, is, there, is there punching? There's a whole lot of punching. I love a good fist fight in a novel or a comic book or a superhero movie. 
And so there's no shortage of brawls. And there's also a lot of questions answered. Who would win in a fight? Iron Man versus Captain Cold. Man. All right. So when are you going to make that into a comic book? I can't draw. I have zero drawing ability. It's possible that I might get together with an artist at some point and do something comic book related. But, uh, wait, speaking of drugs, is it true about licking frogs? A friend wants to know. You don't know him. Uh, asking for a friend. Yeah, I haven't heard that one before. Uh, Raphael. Don't don't make it weird. Okay. Okay, enough of this horsing around. I, I, I've got a serious question for you, Raphael. Are you ready? Ask away. I'm ready. Okay. I'm keeping this themed. Who is your favorite supervillain? I mean, aside from Batman. Ozymandias from The Watchmen. Wow. No powers. Uh, no powers, no uh, no superhuman abilities, just a, an idea, a terrible, terrible idea that he sees through all the way to completion, and he gets away with it. He, hmm. He's utterly victorious. It's, it's a dreadful idea. I love it. That's just, just spooky. You, you write a lot of spooky modules, and you've just got a spooky kind of brain. That's awesome. Thanks, thanks. I, I like to keep it evil. A lot of people think that when you reach a certain age, you sort of mellow out and you, you get nicer. Uh, in 40, you stop being cool, but that's not true. You know, I, I myself am 40 years old, and I still listen to recordings made by rap musicians as I drive my minivan down to Walgreens to get my blood pressure medication. You can still be cool at middle age. I'm sorry, what was the question? Yeah, uh, that's quite all right. I, I got all the answer I need. Well, listen... Okay. Raphael Chandler, it was super cool having you on the show. Thanks for coming on. Thanks so much for having me, Dr. Tom. It was wonderful to meet you. You just watched the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, and we hope that you liked what you saw, yo. But if it was a big waste of your time, well, it's free, so that's not a crime. But if it was a waste of your time, Yes, it's free, so that's not a crime. <laughs>